Hey guys, this is Matt. Welcome back to my garage. So today is finally the day that I get to install my lift. This is something I've dreamt about for a really long time. And until we moved into this house where we were able to kind of customize the garage and, and build it to the dimensions that we needed, I didn't know if I'd ever really be able to have a lift. I mean, I know I could do quick jacks and things like that, but you know, being able to have a little bit taller ceiling in here uh, gave me the options to do a uh, larger lift. So the lift did end up showing up about eight days after it was scheduled to be delivered. And then since then, I've actually been quite sick with colds and ear infections and all that stuff. So anyway, I've got help here today to get the posts uh, uh, standing up, which is probably the only uh, step that I'll need at least, you know, another set of hands, just some of the theory about getting it set up in my garage. So um, basically this is this wall is the furthest wall of my garage. And so what I'm gonna do is set the post uh, relative to that wall and then build my lift out this way. Um, so the first post is gonna have to be the one over there. And once we get it in place, we'll be able to reference dimensions and, and then um, get the second post set up. So I did end up going with the two post lift. Um, I was actually going to buy a scissor lift and the, um, a mid-rise scissor lift so I could get about four feet of lift out of the car because one of my goals with my lift is to not take up that much space in my garage because, you know, I don't want to have to, you know, sacrifice a bunch of my garage space for the lift, at least right now. Um, you know, a scissor lift would just stay on the ground, stay flat. And when it's not in use, it might be a little bit of a tripping hazard, but not really taking up any more volume of the garage. But um, I did go with the two post lift because um, it gave me the height that I was looking for to raise the car with the ceiling that height that I've got. I do have about 10 foot four uh, ceilings, which is still a little low for, uh, for a lot of lifts. So I won't be able to go probably the max height on this lift. Um, but when I purchased the Datsun and both the Datsun and the RX-7 are really short, um, I ran the numbers and basically I'd be able to bring one car in, set it up on the lift and then pull the second car in under it uh, for storage. So um, that's really what kind of drove my decision to go ahead and get a two post lift. Now the second post will encroach upon my second parking space, but I forget, I think my, my garage is like 50 feet long. So uh, as long as I kind of pull in uh, you know, my daily car at an angle, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. So other things you may want to consider if you're going to put a lift in your garage, obviously ceiling height is the first thing. Um, you know, can the lift fit in your garage plus the lifting height that you want to achieve with the car on the lift? The RX-7, the Datsun, I can probably get the full height out of it, provided I've got the garage door shut for now. My BMW would probably be, you know, I might be able to get five, five and a half uh, feet of lift on that before I start getting too close to the ceiling. So that's the first thing to consider. Um, second thing, and probably one of the more important things to consider is your floor. Um, the manufacturers all have kind of various requirements for what they would recommend for the floor thickness, concrete compressive strength, and you know, really just the general condition of the floor. So I happened to build my house a couple years ago. And so I do know that my concrete has the minimum compressive strength that's recommended by this lift manufacturer. I wasn't hundred percent sure on the thickness of the slab but I did go ahead and drill some small test holes in the slab, at least where the anchors are gonna go. And I've, I've, I've at least got four inches. Um, I, I, got, I drilled like four and a half inches and I didn't poke through. Uh, this lift manufacturer recommends four inches. So, um, and really that thickness is a function of the, the anchors that are gonna be used to support these posts. This lift did come with anchors and I'm sure they're plenty fine, but uh, I'm actually a licensed structural engineer. And so I just feel comfortable using products that I'm familiar with. So. I've actually purchased separate anchors that I'll use. Um, I'm sure the anchors that come with this are, are fine, but I went ahead and picked up a set of anchors that I know what the testing requirements have been and the strengths and all those things. So um, I, I do know that the other issue that people may have is the clo you know, how close can you get your lift to a major crack in the floor, construction joints, the edge of the slab. And if you go by the literature of the manufacturer, they're gonna want you to probably be several feet from any of those items. Um, I've run the numbers on my, my situation with my um, distances and I'm going to basically avoid putting an anchor any closer than 8 to 10 inches from any crack or any joint in the slab. Um, and that'll help me develop the full strength of the anchor and, um, and then I don't have to worry about any reductions and, and all that stuff. I know there'll be comments about you should have done this, you should have done that, you should have used adhesive or epoxy. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. I've specified thousands of anchors on projects over the years. So these are probably the best anchors you can get made from Hilti for this application. And they're gonna be plenty strong for the full capacity of this lift. 
um, but I don't even have a car that's even remotely close to the capacity of this lift, which I think it's 9,200 pounds. My BMW is probably 36, 3,800 pounds. The RX-7 and Datsun are both very small. My wife's SUV is probably the heaviest vehicle I may ever put on here. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna get my help out here. We're gonna go ahead and try to get these first posts set up. And again, it's just really taking our time, getting everything unpackaged. But you wanna get the first post in place so that you can reference off that is basically all the rest of your measurements coming out from that post. experience, doesn't it? Grilling out, lawns being mowed, and pools opening. These are some of the things we expect with summer. <laughs>
All right, so quick update. We got the first post set just with two anchors so that we could get the location of the second post set. And we got them all shinned, leveled. Everything's looking good. I do have a five inch slab, so we did find that out. I'm not going into too much detail on how we install this because the manufacturer has a great video on their website you can look at. But essentially now we just need to go ahead and drive all the rest of the anchors that we need to install in both posts. And then really it's just running all the cables and, and the hydraulic lines. So I'm gonna keep going on that and then I'll check in when we're getting close to getting done. All my help has, has gone home. We're, we're supposed to get a big winter storm tonight. I didn't really film a whole lot of steps because I wasn't a time crunch. I was trying to get all this done in one day if I could. And, and really, I've only been working on this for about four and a half hours. And that, you know, there's a lot of chit chat and talking and stuff too. So really, if you really had a couple guys and you were working diligently, I would say you'd get to the point where I'm at right now in about two, two and a half hours. Um, and what we've done is we've got both posts installed um, in their correct locations. We got them all level, plumbed. I've got all the anchors installed and torqued down. Uh, at this point, we've got the control panel and the motor mounted. I'm just making all the final connections between the control panel, the electromagnetic switches, uh, and all that. So really the only thing I have to install is kind of uh, the, the last of the hydraulic lines, um, the protective covers that go over some of the wires once they're all, all connected. So there's no um, need to have an extra set of hands. So I may still keep working on that. But like I said, we are getting that snowstorm tonight. So I would like to get the garage cleaned up so I can get the cars back inside. I think I mentioned earlier that we didn't really go, I'm not going into like too much depth on how to install this because Twin Bush actually has a very good installation video for this lift on their website. And I'll put a link down in the description for that video. And they actually go through pretty much every step. A few questions that you're probably going to have are how much did it cost? You know, what about the shipping? You know, why did I pick this lift? Are probably going to be some of the more common questions I get. So the cost. I had been doing research for a really long time before I even had a YouTube channel on what kind of lift I would like to have in my garage. And like I said earlier, I really was settled on a mid-rise scissor lift, something that would lift like four feet. I figured that would give me plenty of working room to get under the car and do some, some bigger projects. 
obviously be able to lift the entire car up off the ground at one time. But even if you go with like a quick jack system, which only lifts like 20 inches, I think by the time you pay for the quick jacks, and if you get a deal on shipping or hydraulic fluid, I mean, you're still probably paying like 12 to $1,400, depending on if they're on sale or not. You're gonna get 20 inches of lift height. I wish I would have had quick jacks a long time ago, but I knew by the time I spent the kind of money on a quick jack, I could go ahead and get a full size lift. This lift regularly is, is I think it's $1,700 or $1,600. I'll put an annotation on the screen at, at the current price. Benpack actually had a lift that I wanted to try because it was new. I really hadn't seen too many other people install them. And it's a lift, uh, the Grand Prix series is actually made for small garages or, or small ceiling heights. Um, and so that was probably my first choice initially. Um, it was one of the more expensive options that I was I was looking at. I did talk to Ben Pack a couple times about that and essentially they had to stop selling those because there was a redesign that they were going through and that redesign was still ongoing and they weren't expecting shipments of those back into the United States until like March or something of 2019. So, um, and I, I had talked to them back at the beginning of December, November, or maybe even October sometime. So they were looking at like four to five months to be able to get uh, the lift that I wanted. So it kind of turned me away because I wanted to get this sooner rather than later. I was actually wanting to get this installed before the end of 2018, but um, the shipping on mine ended up getting delayed. Twin Bush was the other two post lift that I was looking at. I know there was lots of others out there, but you know, this one I have heard nothing but good comments about and you know, from all things that I can see, it's basically built the same way and, and same safety features and things as something like the Ben Pack would have. So, um, like I said, this is this was about seventeen hundred dollars. I did reach out to Twin Bush and say, "Hey, I'd like to install your lift," um, and they basically gave me a, like a five percent discount. So it really wasn't it was like eighty bucks or something minus the five percent discount, and then I had to pay three hundred and sixty-five dollars for shipping to Kentucky from Las Vegas. Out the door, everything, tax fees, whatever I had to pay. I paid a little over $1,900 and I could have paid a little extra and had them bring it to my house, but knowing the timing of everything, it was just easier for me to go pick it up at their port than try to get it delivered here at my house. So if you're going to have it shipped to your house, and this is probably true of almost any lift manufacturer, they require you to be responsible for removing the lift from the delivery vehicle onto your property. So they're going to ship it on a truck. They're not going to send you know, a piggyback or a, um, a forklift or anything like that to get it off the, the vehicle. I have seen where other people have gone and rented uh, a forklift for a day just to do this. Um, I think the total weight on this was about it's like 14 to 1500 pounds. So maybe if you have access to a bigger tractor or something, you may be able to do it that way. But it was just easier for me to go pick it up at their port. Basically, I just drove over there with a the truck and trailer and they put it on the trailer for me and we went about our business. And then getting it here was not all that difficult. And I just basically used my engine hoist uh, to lift one end of it up and put a, we put a dolly on one end, the far, the far end on the trailer, came to the other end, lifted it up with the uh, engine hoist, drug it to the end of the trailer, um, used a, uh, uh, set that end on the ground, used the engine hoist to lift the other end. Uh, actually, I set that other end on a dolly, used the engine hoist to set the whole thing, roll it over off the trailer, set it on the ground. So really with the engine hoist, and a car jack uh, and some dollies, we were able to get it off the trailer and into my garage. So, um, you know, I was, that was probably the part I was most worried about, but at, at two guys and like 20 minutes, we got it off the trailer and rolled it into my garage. If you're considering doing um, similar to what I did and whether you have it delivered to your house or you go pick it up at the port, a couple things that'll be important. Um, one, do a full inspection of the lift at the port or when it's delivered. If it looks like there's any significant damage or there's any kind of missing parts or, or anything suspicious, make sure to write it down on the, on the, uh, the paper that they're going to have you sign to release the uh, delivery. Um, if it's severely damaged, just don't accept the delivery. Mine was basically two boxes and I'll put a picture on the screen. Basically the, the, the posts were mounted together with a frame and that was kind of one bundle. And then there was a second box which housed, um, the motor unit and the, the hydraulic tank. When they shipped it to me, they actually took a photo of it before it got shipped out of Las Vegas and they emailed that to me. The, the smaller box was sitting on top of the bigger box and it was all bound together with plastic. When I went to pick up the lift from the port, the a lot of the plastic had been damaged or like, you know, kind of, you know, cut up and the box, the smaller box actually comes separated from the bigger box 
and it had clearly been dropped a few times because the whole packaging was destroyed. So um, there is no obvious like physical damage to the to the pump or the tank, but until I get it hooked up and make sure that it's it's working properly, I'm not 100% sure if, if there's any damage there. Um, a lot of scrapes and scratches and minor flaws like that are to be expected. You know, in my case, this lift came from Vegas, went to Phoenix, I think New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, like Tennessee. It went, well, I got to Tennessee and got stuck there for like 10 days. Um, but anyway, so the amount of times that they're going to have to move it, unload it, you know, each time they do that, it, there's a chance that this, something happens. So I do have a lot of scrapes and scratches. Um, I'm not seeing anything that's detrimental to the function of the lift, so I'll just get some touch-up paint. But so far, I'm really impressed with this lift. Um, everything that became in the packaging was clearly labeled as to what it was. Um, the user's manual is not like super helpful. I mean, there's obviously diagrams, but like I said, their Twin Bushes installation video, it basically goes through step by step, and I've kind of followed along that when we got stuck on some parts um, of the installation. But I mean, I had four guys essentially helping me, uh, and I think two guys would really um, be enough because you know each post is probably four or five hundred pounds, something like that. You know, really, if you have a jack, a dolly, or engine hoist. You can move it around for the most part using those, and then it's easy for two guys just to set it up. So two people minimum um, to get this set up, but that, that was about it. So this is a 110 uh, power, and most lifts are gonna be 220. When I had this garage built, I have electrical outlets kind of scattered throughout the ceiling, and they're on their own switch and stuff. So what I'm gonna do is when I get this powered up, I've, I've, got, uh, I've got outlets on the ceiling already to, to connect this at 110. Um, so that was another reason why I like this lift is it was 110 and it's probably going to be what a lot of people are going to have access to. I mean, running a 220 is not that difficult. That's another thing to consider if you're getting a lift is your power requirements. Um, and the last thing I'll say, just because, um, I am a structural engineer and I think that it'll be important for everybody to understand is that, you know, follow the instructions with the anchors, um, whether you use the ones that come with your lift or you buy separate ones. Um, like I said, I went ahead and bought separate ones because, um, I knew what the product was, I knew what they were rated for, I knew what their designs were. Um, I, I just felt better using the Hilti anchors. So aside from the anchors that I purchased, which is totally optional, you do need to have your own hydraulic fluid. Um, I got five gallons at one of the auto parts stores. It was like, I don't remember, 30, 40 bucks, something like that. I mean, material wise, that's probably it. Uh, we did end up using the shims that came with the lift and to get everything nice and vertical in both directions. If you don't have um, a torque wrench, you're gonna need a torque wrench because a lot of these larger diameter anchors are gonna need 100, 120 foot pounds, something like that. So if you need a, you may need a larger torque wrench. And then you're probably gonna need a hammer drill. Uh, if you don't have one already, uh, you can rent them or I, I borrowed one from a buddy. So I, I, I got that without having to spend any money. And I think that's it. I mean, like I said, this is something I've been looking forward to for a real long time. And it's a real luxury to have because you know, setting a car up every time on jack stands or, or you know, you, don't, you just don't get enough height, but also I just, I never feel 100% safe when I'm, you know, I usually put multiple jack stands or I slide the tire and wheel underneath the car just in case something were to fail. At least it might catch on that before crushing me. So um, this will be nice. And like I said, I'm, I'm pretty confident that we got every, all the anchors installed. And once they're torqued down to the manufacturer's spec, I mean, really those anchors should never see any more stress than that. Um, and it's hard to explain, but essentially once they've been torqued down, um, you're basically pre-tensioning and pre-loading that anchor. And so even if I go in and load this up to its full capacity, um, in theory, if everything's been designed correctly, uh, you're really not actually putting any more force into that anchor that it currently sees. So, you know, I don't have any issues. I haven't seen any issues with the concrete or had any that didn't torque down. So um, I'll keep my eye on them and I might retorque them or check the torque on them after I've used the lift for a little bit, but um, I'm really happy that everything went, uh, went according to plan there. Again, you want to stay away from construction joints. You want to stay away from your edges uh, because that's, that's going to limit the capacity of those anchors. This is probably going to be one long video just for this. And then in part two, I'll go ahead and finish getting everything installed and hopefully be able to bring the car in and, and test all this out. So I'm, I'm really excited and I've got lots of projects in mind that I wanna go ahead and get knocked out now that I've got this. But you know, one of the other nice things I'll be able to do with this is bring the dots in from outside to inside, um, just cause I don't, I don't like the idea of it just sitting out there all the time. Obviously it'll, it'll, it'll have to be moved in and out every time I wanna do something, but at least for now, I'll be able to keep it in storage inside where it'll be protected. This is the RX-7 t-shirt that I had made. So it's got the, the graphic of the, uh, RX-7 on the back. 
Um, so I've got a link down below. Um, my recommendation would be, I like the, I like the print quality for some reason on the white t-shirts because some of the art on the RX-7 is kind of dark. It doesn't show up very well on a black t-shirt. So I would go with a, maybe a lighter color shirt as a recommendation. I'm going to go ahead and sign off now just in case I don't end up finishing the complete install in this video. And if you guys have any questions, definitely leave them down below. I'm sure you'll have comments. So I'll, I'll look forward to reading those and, and interacting with you guys. Um, if you haven't already, please go check me out on Instagram because I post uh, you know, in between videos there of what I'm doing and what I'm going, what I have going on, more pictures of the cars and stuff like that. Um, any quick update on the RX-7? Um, I got it all buttoned up. It drives fine. I have no issues so far. I mean, I haven't taken it on like a big cruise through the country or anything, but you know, just moving it around and stuff around here, you know, I haven't seen any leaks or had any issues with the car starting up. So I'm really happy that all those projects that I did with the fuel pump and the diff have seemed to fix those issues, but um, I'm about to lose uh, my memory space on my card, so I will go ahead and sign off. I'll see you guys soon, and thank you for watching.